What's up you guys, welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much for clicking on today's video. It feels so good to be back. Miami was a lot of fun, but I'm glad to be home back with my routine. Now, as I was in Miami, I <laughs> I made a tweet and then I proceeded to put that tweet onto my Instagram and I knew that there would be a little bit of, nah, I don't wanna call it backlash, but a little bit of back and forth with other people uh, regarding the topic that I talked about. I had absolutely no idea it would be as crazy as it was. So that's what we're gonna be talking about in today's video. So the tweet was about what I personally think is one of the most infamous myths when it comes to losing weight, and that is starvation mode. So the tweet that I put on my Instagram says this, I promise you, you are not, not <laughs> losing weight because you are eating too little calories. Now maybe I should have said too few calories because that would have been more like grammatically correct, but you know, we do what we do. And then in the caption, I proceeded to say, probably one of the most infamous myths about losing weight. The reason you are not losing weight is because you are not in a caloric deficit, not because you're in too much of a deficit. This is one of those hard to swallow truths, but none, but true nonetheless. I will ask you, when was the last time you saw an obese, starving person? Most likely, you are not correctly calculating the calories you are consuming on a daily basis, or your cheat day or weekend is much more damaged calorie-wise than you think. There are obviously outliers here that have conditions that make losing weight harder, but no matter what, you need to be in a deficit to lose weight. Don't let people trick you into buying into their easy weight loss schemes. Now, as I said in the post, starvation mode is one of those myths that is very, very uh, pervasive, in, especially in the weight loss space, because honestly, I think it makes people feel good. Like this is something I used to believe when I was trying to lose weight before as well. It was like, oh, I if I'm eating too little, like you hear that so much, right? Like, oh, I was eating too little, that's why I wasn't losing weight. And like, it's almost like this, Thing people want to believe because they want to believe that they were almost working too hard and that's why they weren't able to get the weight off. Now, a couple of the explanations I personally have from talking to literally thousands of people and dealing with it myself is, one, people think they're eating a certain amount of calories when they're actually eating a different amount of calories. Now, what I mean by this is, Tracking your macros or your calories, it really is a skill that you have to learn. And so if you are just starting out, you're most likely probably not calculating it very correctly. And that's totally fine. It takes time to learn how to do it. But if you're just trying to think of the number in your head and you're like, oh, last Saturday, this is what I ate. So I probably eat about this many calories. Most likely you are wrong on that calorie number. So I think one of the big, and this is like for a vast majority of people, we're just not accurately calculating the amount of calories you are actually eating in a day. Another thing is that people don't realize how much damage, and I, I hate to call it damage, but like how many more calories you're actually eating on these cheat meals, cheat days, uh, weekends, you know, a lot of people might track really meticulously uh, Monday through Friday, but then Saturday and Sunday, they kind of eat whatever they want or they kind of go hard. And if you are you know, eating 1500 calories throughout the week, every single day. But then on the weekend, Saturday and Sunday, you're eating 4,000 calories both of those days. Chances are you're probably no longer going to be in a deficit. So a lot of people think that, oh, they, they honestly, like, I know it sounds silly, but people literally forget about the weekend and how much damage they're actually doing on those meals that they're having out with their friends and stuff. And I want to make it very clear. I am not saying that you shouldn't go out to eat with friends. I'm not saying that you shouldn't enjoy food. Not at all. But if you are trying to lose weight and you start blaming the fact that you're not eating enough and that's why you're not losing weight, I challenge you to really think about every single calorie that is going into your body because every calorie counts and you need to make sure that you are accounting for all of those when you are trying to figure out if you're in a deficit or not. Now, one of my friends, Kelly, actually responded disagreeing with what I said, and this is what she said. I'd have to disagree with this. As someone who coaches women, I often get women who come to me hardly eating a thing and they can't lose weight. Technically, they aren't in a true deficit, but to get to that, point they'd have to legitimately starve themselves or do hours of cardio. Oftentimes people aren't feeding their bodies enough to generate the in energy they need in order to have a healthy metabolism to actually respond to a cut. If we're talking about morbidly obese, then maybe this would apply, but in general, I'd respectfully disagree. Now I will say that obviously when I'm making posts, I'm making posts for the vast majority of my audience. And I understand that the majority of me, my audience, the people that are watching, listening to what I'm saying 
are trying to lose a substantial amount of weight. So when I am making these posts, I am not thinking about the girl that's trying to cut an extra 10 pounds off or an extra five pounds off or something like that, where they're, they're really pretty lean already and they're just trying to cut that little bit of excess. You know, I'm talking about the people that are trying to lose 50 pounds and they're starting to say that the reason they're not losing weight is because they're eating too little calories. Now, something that I do agree with that she says is, Oftentimes, people aren't feeding their bodies enough to generate the energy they need in order to have a healthy metabolism. Now, that's something that happens quite often. Like, if you are eating very, very low calories, most likely you're neat or non-exercise activity thermogenesis. So the, the the calories that you're burning just kind of moving around, going on a walk, or, or like going shopping, or literally just kind of living your life, it goes down quite dramatically. Like, when I was in my cut for my men's physique show, and I was at my lowest amount of calories, which really wasn't that low but it was it was like 2100 calories I barely moved unless I was at the gym like I remember just being like I have never felt this lazy like the amount of calories that I burned outside of the gym were very very low so a lot of people when they're eating very very low calories they're actually burning a lot less as well because they're not moving around they're not working out they're not doing these other things because they have just no energy so that's something that kind of goes into play as well now my friend Dr. Nadolski I actually recorded a podcast with him that will be out very soon I'm really really excited about that but he actually made a meme about this exact thing that I think explains everything that I believe pretty perfectly this is the meme right here and it says starvation mode doesn't exist so in the description it says eating so little that you gain weight that's not how this works your metabolism isn't broken I've had patients who weigh 250 pounds and higher say they think they aren't eating enough and that's the reason they can't lose weight. It's because of these stupid myths that are perpetuated that they believe this stuff. When I have to gently explain, it's quite the opposite. They are eating way too much. Yes, eating fewer calories will drop your metabolism with weight loss. That's normal. Yes, there may be a further slowing beyond what it's what is predicted, but it's pretty small, 0 to 15% difference. But it won't slow so much that you start gaining weight on such few calories. It doesn't happen. Why does it seem like a thing? There are likely binging episodes unaccounted. When you give yourself more to eat, you stop binging and the average deficit over the week is actually less. You also have more energy to train. You're not in some silly starvation mode, but yes, eating more may be beneficial. So what he says right there, especially about the binging is I 100% I agree with. Um, when you are eating very, very low calories, a lot of times, and this is exactly what happened to me when I was struggling with binge eating, was I was eating so low calories, you know, like 700 calories a day, and I would do that for three or four days, but then I would binge like crazy on one or two days out of the week. And in reality, my average calorie, you know, my deficit for the week disappeared because of how many calories I ate in that binge. So that's why, not for everyone, but for a lot of people, sometimes upping your calories each day, so if you're only eating 700, like upping that to 1200, or if you're only eating 1200, upping that to 1500, and making it much easy to adhere to that number will mean you probably will no longer have the urge to want to binge, so that binge is gone, so that extra 4000 calories you ate because you were starving is now no longer there, and you actually start losing weight. So daily, you're eating more calories, but weekly, the amount of calories that you're eating has actually gone down and now you're losing weight again. The thing that I think is very important to talk about is when you lose weight, the amount of calories you need will go down. So a 400 pound man, if he loses 200 pounds, does not need to be eating as much as when he was 400 pounds. So that's why I think it's important to, when you are losing weight every you know, 30, 20, 30 pounds, make sure you recalculate how many calories you should be eating because that number is going to go down. If you're starting at 400 pounds, you could probably eat literally 3000 calories and lose weight, but once you get down to 200 pounds, that's most likely not going to be the case anymore. So it doesn't mean like you're in a starvation mode, it just means your body is shrinking and it doesn't require as many calories. Now this is why I am a very strong proponent of not being in too severe of a deficit because when that happens, you end up maybe binging, you end up maybe overeating on some of the days and it just gets very, very frustrating. So when you do that deficit that's not too drastic, that is a lot easier to adhere to, 
you don't have to deal with these things. And it is very frustrating. And I know, I know for a fact there's going to be people in the comments that are arguing about hormones, that are arguing about how I'm wrong. And that's fine. Like everyone has their own opinion. But I can say from my experience and from working with literally thousands of people and talking with hundreds of people behind the scenes, that when they actually started tracking correctly and learning how to track every macro, every calorie, and just understanding what's going into their body, a lot of times they're like, oh, actually I was eating a lot more than I thought, or maybe I was drinking liquid calories that I didn't account for. Like there's so many factors that go into it that people maybe aren't just aren't aware of. So that is my experience with the whole starvation mode. I have never met anyone personally that was like, yeah, I was lit and they knew for a fact they were eating a thousand calories and there was nothing else. They weren't overeating. They were eating a thousand calories and they were gaining weight. I have never met a single person that that has actually happened to. And as I said in the post, of course there are outliers and there's a very small group of people that might be dealing with some serious issues that there might be, you know, this whole method might not work for you because you have some medical issues. I understand that. This video is for the 95 to 99% of people that don't have that. So if you are dealing with that, obviously I'm sorry for you and I'm, I'm that sucks that you're dealing with it. This video is not for you. And so don't, I hope you don't feel like I am attacking you with this information. But again, that's just my thoughts on starvation mode, dealing with it, dealing with other people that felt like they were dealing with it. You know, that's just my experience. Again, if you guys wanna check out my podcast where I do talk to Spencer or Dr. Nodolsky, I will link it down in the description. The actual episode's not gonna be up yet, but you guys can subscribe to the podcast so you can know when it will come out. It's called Work for Change. I would really appreciate it. But thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. There was one other thing that I wanted to say. Oh yeah. Look how buff I am. <laughs> Obey the warning signs, and when there are flashing lights or wigwags, don't attempt to cross until they come to a complete stop.